Guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back for part two of the FS 400 toy and engine four-stroke build. So, here we go. Now, take the camera. Okay, swing. And we're going to look at the directions. Okay, where we left off before was the, uh, let's see my mouse over here we left off with the lower pan and now we're going to go down to the side there and we're going to start dealing with the water pump here we go moving this camera around kind of sucks but it is what it is now, we'll get back to our little nut and bolt bin here we got. This is the other one that comes with. This has all your carburetor stuff in it. And it looks like some head bolts and your little, oh, your little water um, nipples there and all that good stuff. We ain't going to get to that yet. What we're going to do it here. We're going to break out the stuff which would be in this bin here. Number 66 is the bolts, 86 is the plate, and 87 is the gasket. Or vice versa. Well, that's the way it goes, 87 is the gasket. So we'll pull the bolts out. This here is pretty much a no-brainer. It's just a cover. That covers the crankcase. Um, on the inside when you're um, more I don't know if they had planned on putting like a <clears throat> a dry sump oiling system on it or not but this is what we're gonna do being that there's really nothing coming out of there you don't have to seal it up or nothing you just grab your plate and your gasket could use my grease I guess to pick the gasket out look at that huh look how simple that was now put a little grease on it it helps the gasket stay in place like so that way it doesn't go flying around if you got a ceiling fan on like I do right now and you just bolt these in a little pattern there make sure your gasket's held in place Ta da just like so. Now I'm not lock Loctite in these things because I may <clears throat> use this as a oh, kind of a backup breather system or something down the road. So I, like I say, the, the bolts, nothing has vibrated out so far. But if you want to Loctite them, if you have no future use for it, go for it okay kind of a hands-on video I was gonna fast forward through a lot of stuff but I figured hey anybody can if you got a tablet you can bang through it 10 seconds at a time a lot of this stuff is repetitive, like the pistons, the carburetors. So I'll probably do one build on one carburetor. And now, there is our water pump area. You see it's already got a bronze bushing in there. Okay, and here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going to get... Let's see... Uh, 68... 75, 72, 73. That's what we're going to get out of this one little packet right here. <clears throat> so, I'm going to get these two gaskets out already. This, these come with two two gaskets. Use, I used both of them on mine. I had to tear mine back apart again because it leaked, <clears throat> which wasn't cool. And, you know, if you already got your build all done, 
<clears throat> and you never really water tested it. There's a you're gonna use that at the backing. We got our two gears. It'll be fun. Brass is non-magnetic, so you're gonna to have to kind of pick them out. Now, here's the deal. When you look at these two gears you're gonna see one has a little flat spot in it and one has a just a round circle okay now the round circle goes on the top <clears throat> and the one in the flat spot goes on the bottom so I gotta find that little pin in here and there it is right there because it's non-magnetic I gotta get my little q-tip with the grease and pull it out there we go now what I did on mine when I assembled the thing I did put a little grease in there because if you run coolant or whatever and when it gets warm it will um, you know it it will melt the grease out of it through the system but so we want the pin goes in first on the upper hole. This is going to be tricky. There we go. Put in the hole like so. Press it in. And if you get grease in there, make sure you, you know, push up and down a few times. That way it doesn't go anywhere. This is your inner gasket. You put that in. There's two round holes on it. No big deal. Like that now you put the upper gear on that just has the circular hole and you put the lower gear on that has the flat spot in the hole like so these are kind of a super tight fit and they go in come on baby he can do it because they push the water Excuse my big fingers, guys, but got to get it in there somehow. And give it a turn. These are real tight. There we go. So now you see it's in there. Okay. Now we go to the next step. And that's our water pump plate. And we got to find that. There. Aha. Uh -huh. Over here. Now, there's two little plates inside the thing here. One was in here, and there's one right beside. There's a little tiny thing in there. You see that in there? Yeah, that. You got to get that out of there, too. Now, <clears throat> this is where it gets kind of tricky because they want you to put the shaft through a bearing so we got that got the bearing bearing to go in the recess of the outer plate like so like that and this is actually a rubber seal okay 
I swore the other one had a bearing unless I'm missing a bearing out of here may not be good but we'll see if we can nope that's right that's the seal okay so when you put the seal in if you notice there's a recess oh, I'm trying to get our focus on here there guys there's a recess in the seal okay gotta get some light on it there the recess part goes outward that way when the pressure comes in it pushes the seal tighter so now they put a little grease on your on your little uh, your little gear here for your water pump drive just put it on the shaft don't put it on uh, on the gear itself because the gear is what runs on your uh, your belt now you run that through like so like that okay and like that so the seals on the inside you'll see a lip in there now that lip you use this tiny tiny little o-ring it's right here I have my finger right there that little o-ring seals this you put it on the shaft like so and then just walk it down So it comes down the shaft. It's so hard to catch the the thing just right here with the focus. Okay, so I got the big seal in there and the little seal in there. Okay. Now this is where these two gaskets come in play. Uh, let's see. There's two holes in the gasket, and it looks like they had a drain hole or, you know, a water pump drain coming out of this thing before. So you put the gasket on there like that. Then, you line up the little flat spot in the gear, like so, and kind of make sure all these go together in here without pinching them, because these will set inside that recess. Like that, walk it back and forth a little bit. And look at it to make sure it's in there. Actually, this is setting out a little bit further than I like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to put them in this way. Like so. There we go. So when you put these together, This would be your intake side of the block. You want two holes over here, and you want that hole down there. It's centered. And then you set this right down in the, the shaft area down in there. Kind of give it a little turn. Like so. And it still sticks up too high for my taste. Now let's try one gasket. Maybe they uh, had an update on these things. It's just setting up too high and I know all that's gonna do is bind. So, let me try the one gasket in there. See if that does anything. This is where it gets a little tricky. Yeah, see, it's 
seems too loose to me. That they only say use one gasket. One gasket it is. 36. And these are the 2.5 by 6 millimeters. So, those are, let's get all these out of here. Four of these. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. Uh, there we go. You have to excuse me. I just got home from work. I'm a little bit burnt. Got a rough day at work today. I don't know if you guys work with uh, people or hang out with people that sometimes you can get a lot of drama going on, and I try to avoid the drama as much as I can. Well, it's non-productive, if you know what I'm saying. Gotta make sure that sits flat down there. That's a good deal. I like that. So, so far, one gasket's working here. We'll see how it works out. You could probably put some, oh, some kind of a sealer in there if you liked. Um... But it's such a precision hole in there with the, the pump shaft and the, the gears and everything. There's not a whole lot of room in there. Yeah, this does fit a, a heck of a lot better than my other one did. Yeah, this one has, has a nice, uh, nice tight. Now, I'm going to try to turn this shaft. Some pliers here. Oh, I mean it. Just to make sure everything's working good. I'm going to do that off camera right now. And okay, so far so good. We got some turning. That's all you wanted to do is turn and kind of seat in because it's real tight against the uh, it's real tight against the housing, so you want it all because when if that's if that's locked up, it's just going to smear the teeth off your belt. So just make sure that everything works good, everything's good. Now this is the the one thing they don't tell you. If they do, maybe it's not in my directions, but they have you put this cover on. Right here with the bearing in it that I put that little bearing in. They have you put that on, but you don't Loctite nothing. Don't don't Loctite anything for the simple fact that you got to take it back off to put your belt on to snake your belt through it after you get your camshaft in it. So just put them in there for now loosely to make sure it's together, out of the way, and you can just pop out the little three screws that go in there, and you can. Slip your belt down in between it later, and then if you want, you can lock tight it up then. So. The three screws, bolt that plate on. Ta da! Okay, now the water pump's there. Okay, now. Now they got us working on the cylinder head. Okay. Now, like I said with you guys, if you, you know, you can't put the camshaft in now. You can assemble all the rockers and stuff and the followers and, you know, the everything on it. But you can't, um, you can't get to the screws on the side over here. I said in my other video, you can't get to these corner screws because the camshaft goes through right there and you can't get an allen wrench in there so so they have us put the tappets on 
two. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. Some grease. This is what I do. I grease inside to tap it. And I put it on there because there's very little grease is going to get up inside that thing after it's running. You just want some lubrication in there. You want a lot of grease, just a little in there to keep the wear factor down. You know what I'm saying? And I'll show you a little neat trick when it comes to um, putting your Eclipse on your your uh, rocker arms. They say the directions are pretty self-explanatory. And uh, you know, once you start, once you start doing the, you know, looking at the directions and start putting it together, it, it's pretty easy. Like I flew through my first one, and that was pretty simple. So this one here, I expected to take about four hours to put it together, because that's what it took me to put the first one together. And uh, but. I think it, uh, I did the whole lower end there, except for the water pump and stuff on video number one, part one there, in about 45 minutes. So, and, you know, don't be afraid. You can check things out. You can do, look at, you know, make sure everything fits nice and all that stuff. You may have to re, you know, take something apart, you know. To reseed it or you know whatever so, so let me see we need 52 now we need these little plugs and these little plugs kind of are all over the place in here so we got one two three that's a big one so we got one that I did to run a muck somewhere. I don't see it in here. Which is not cool. That ain't it, so. so in this little container you're gonna have uh, these little grub screws here. And what they want you to do Put them in the cylinder head. So there should be four of them in my container, <clears throat> and there's only two. Kind of a bummer. So I'm going to have to come up with some grub screws. And when you put them in, just set them in so they're flush. That's all you need to do, because this right here will actually go through to the camshaft. And... You don't want it to, uh, you don't want it grinding against the camshaft. I'm going to put these on the outside here. For now, make sure that I've got plenty of room in there. Kind of like they almost were going to put a cam bearing in there and these were going to hold them in place. Or they were going to have that external oiling system come in here on the cylinder head. Okay. Thirty-eight. Let's get in our other. Thirty-eight. So. Now, one thing that's cool about these kits, they do have spare parts in one of the trays here. Um, it'll show you in the directions what are spare parts. So that way you'll be able to kind of 
you know, if you lose something or you're, you know, something was not in the kit, you'll be able to find it. Now, the other four, there's eight of them in there. The other four are for your cylinder head. And they go on the outsides of the other colored, shiny stainless screws. Now, let me put some of this stuff off to the side. Got in there. Now, this is where we're going to assemble our rocker. Um, Eclipse and all that cool jazz. So I'm gonna get set up for this. So I'm gonna turn the camera off for a second. And I'm gonna get all the hardware out. Okay, there's a nose. These are these. Hope this video isn't boring you guys okay you guys stay put and I'm gonna go get a bag and I'll be right back okay so we're back so here's what we're gonna do I got my rocker shafts my rocker arms and I found all my little eclipse here okay so there's eight Eclipse, and here's the problem. Okay, uh, they should have been in the one container or the other container here. Right here, they should have been in here. Okay, so there was there was four of them here. All right, there's four number 40s in there. The rest were scattered amongst all the rest of the stuff from the shipping. Which, you know, if they put these together and maybe put a piece of plastic over them so they don't change compartments. And I was missing some, so I had to go to my spare parts. Now, if you look up in here where I, uh, where the water pump stuff is up here, there's two gaskets, okay, two gears, um, an O-ring, a shaft, and a bearing and a seal. Well, what do you see in there? You see all these Eclipse in there that somehow got in there that aren't supposed to be there. And they're in a different compartment. Go figure that one out. So, this is the trick I wanted to show you guys, okay? When you're putting together, like, small stuff like that, I know everybody's got, like, their preferences and stuff. So, here's what I do. Okay, I get my shaft. And I make sure that where it's going to set. And this depends on how you put these on. Now, a little grease. Just a little bit. And I put your shaft, your rocker arm on there. Okay. Now don't worry about which way because you can always turn that shaft 180 that way or you turn that that way. So it'll it'll be okay. Just make sure you put these on the same same way. Okay? So now we got the two bumps at the back, the two longs on the front. And like I say, you can, if you have to, you can rotate that shaft and that block will be forward. And all the rockers will still be in the same position. So what I do is, I get my little clip, and I put it on, all right? Now, normally, I'm not on camera doing this, so put this in a bag like that and I'll hold it with one hand all right and then I'll get my little screwdriver in there and I'll put it in okay now the reason I do it in a bag is so when that thing decides it's going to take off and you only have so many of those little eclipse the bag catches it it's in the bag so you're not uh 
you're not wandering through your house three months later and figuring out that you found your little eclip from your project a long time ago. And you can finish it finally after all these years. do the one rocker on camera and then I will put it in the bag like so hold it at the bottom make sure you got it all out get your little screwdriver in there with your pliers or whatever a little grease would probably help here I don't know why I didn't put grease on that I'm gonna put some grease on it right now just to hold that thing in place I got massive fingers, huh? Kind of sucks to do it this way, but it is what it is. There we go. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Put your flyers in there. You can do whatever you want, but. There we go. Now, ta-da! It's in. Now, when you pull it out, both your Eclipse are on. And if you do going to lose them, they would have been safe in the bag. So, now, these are going to go like that. Just like so. I'm going to set these together loose. Because I'm going to take them back out again put the camshaft in it like so so that's how it's gonna go I'm gonna set it in there just like that and now this does tighten all the way down but for now I'm gonna put the rest of these together that way it's not gonna bore you guys and I'll be right back okay <clears throat> so I got them together now you see on the very back side I'm gonna take one of them out for you show you how these go now that's how you want it like that you want the two bumps at the back and you'll see that little hole in the center how it's facing the notch is facing backwards towards the two bumps that's the way you want it now if you put one of these together upside down you got to take the back part again okay but when you have them at the back you set it inside the little notch that's in there like so and now you'll see that that little bump is riding center on that tappet cover all the way across They're all riding center on the tappets so and the camshaft will do the rest of the work for you like I say I'm not going to tighten them down or lock tight them because I got to relieve the pressure on them to put the cam in it later you can slide it in there if you want but always remember use the baggy trick because it just saves you a lot of grief and while I was off camera, I did find my other oh little plugs for my uh, my cylinder head. And why they're in this or on this side over here, I have no clue. But at least they're here, and I'm happy about that. But sometimes it's a little difficult. To uh, come up with spare parts when you don't have them. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to put these in now so they don't get lost. Over here. 
So I know the lighting's a little tough in here, um, but I got my studio lights here and everything, so I try to keep it as light as I can for you guys. And my camera probably sucks. <laughs> it's good for doing big stuff, I guess, and but to do micro micro builds like this is probably kind of hard but I just run these in where they're just flush a little bit you know what I mean we're just sticking above it let it dry and then you can readjust them later okay now we're talking about putting the cylinder head on so we get our gasket bag out and we got our one of our head gaskets because they give you spares now these are like a graphite gasket, so they hold a lot of heat, and uh, they're kind of messy. Your hands are going to be all black when you're, you know, it's going to have like pencil graphite all over you. And let me set that on on the cylinder. Try to make sure. Boy, that one there looks like it got tore up pretty good, huh? Hope it seals okay. I'm going to give it the Gorilla Grip anyway. So we need number 38 on the screws, which are these here, these the other one, the other four from um, the rocker arm shafts. Three and one more. And 37, which I believe is right next door. Yeah, 37 is over here. Hey, look, we got another E-clip up in there that's hiding in there. How to get in there from the Gorilla shipping. Like I say, just a small, if they fill these things up real nice and just put a piece of cellophane over them or something, just to keep everything in one compartment. Lots of head bolts here. Now. Our head goes in the right direction. You want the exhaust to this side. So when you're looking at the front of the motor, you want your cam hole to that side of the engine. So the silver ones go on the outside holes over here, like so. You want to line these up with the head gasket. There we are. There's one. Just get it started. Counter, counter, other side a little bit. There's two. And four. I'm over here blindly doing this. I can't look down in the hole and see through the camera at the same time. All right. Just kind of, not really snug them. Just, just a little bit tight. That's what I like to do. Because you got to put all the rest of them in, and you tighten them up. On a different, like a cross pattern to tighten the thing. So now, I'm going to set these in, and I'm going to get all these set in, and I'll be back.
Okay, I start in the center. One, two, like so. Just get these tight, just like not over tight. Then I go to the four outside ones. One, like a cross pattern. And I start down the center row, because I have the center row. And then I go to this side back here. And I go to the front side up here. And this way here, it gives it a nice even tightening if you tighten them in like a sequence like this. Instead of tightening them from one end to the other. Okay, now I will go back afterwards and give them a crank. I mean, a good crank. I like I like my head bolts tight, 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 tight. Yeah, that's too big. I believe this is the one they gave you. Yeah. But they're way down in there, boy. You you really can't use the long end of the long end of the Allen. You know what I'm saying? So. And I'm going to get one of my other ones and give that a super tight crank. Now we're on to the next project. Well, this is the fun part. This is the cam. So I'm going to tighten that up and get everything out for the cam shop. Okay, we're going to do the cam shaft. And that will conclude part two. Okay, so here we go. Now, in your blister pack here, your foam pack, you're going to see a shaft that's hollow. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna need that. It's right next to your your piston tool. Now we put the pistons in on part one. Okay. Now, on your other foam pack, you're gonna see your camshaft next to your valve cover. So you take that out, and you're gonna see two bearings here. One, two. We're gonna need both of those. These are actually numbered. These bearings are 06 in your schematic. They're a flange bearing. And we're gonna need some seals too, which are in the your kit here. Number 42, I believe they are. One, two. You're gonna need a couple of those. some Eclipse in there. It's cool that they, that they try to put them all in one little package for you. However, sometimes they get mixed up, you know. So, if you can't find nothing, look around in your kit. Um, because each and every part is in there, you know. Now, we get our grease out. Our Q-tip again. And on the camshaft, we're going to start on the end that has the draw, uh, the pin, uh, the pinhole in it, and we're going to grease that thing up. Okay. Now, we're going to slide the seal over number forty-two. Now, the way I put my seals in, there's an opening on one end. And it's just flat on the other. I always put the opening towards the inside of the motor. So if there's any pressure in there, the pressure hits that seal and it expands it. So you're going to want to put that in with the flat side out. So when you got it on there, like so. You're gonna, it's going to look like that. It's going to look flat on the top, and it's going to be open on the inside. Now, we're going to put in our, our bearing. So it's number six. You're going to slide that over, like so. It's a tight, tight fit. So some of these you may have to persuade a little bit with uh, 
I don't know, like a light tapping hammer or pliers or something, or you know, I try to use like a screwdriver handle just to kind of get it started over it. And they say to use a hammer on it, but so this is where this comes in. Once you get it down near enough, then you tap on this. I don't have a hander hammer quite handy here, but I'm gonna kind of use my trusty vice grips. Get started in there. It's kind of hard when you're. I normally use a socket, you know, something that's a little bit bigger that will work. So once you get it down past the ridges where the eclipse go, this will set right on top of the cam like so. And then you just tap it on. Like so. You get it down there. And now you see it's past. You get it past the second one, I do believe. Yeah. Pass your second slot because there's two slots one two now you put on an e-clip and I'm not going to use the bag on this because these are bigger so that means they'll fly further <laughs> and the cool thing is that they're black so I'll be able to hopefully see them on my kitchen floor okay so there we go it's on that's cool Slide it back a little bit. And the bearing. Because you want it against that E clip. Now, now you take the pin, that's number 39. Put the pin in there, like so. And then you go to your your foam pack again and you have two pulleys up here in the corner you get the uh, the one in the corner over here with a slot in the back of it like so and you put that on like so so now make sure it's a it's a pretty tight fit to get it on there now you'll put an e-clip on the top of the thing down just to make sure it's on there now. Don't bend your camshaft, whatever you do, because these are these are pretty brittle, and they're if you bend it, your valve geometry, your lift's going to be all screwed up. So try not to bend your camshaft. Okay, ta -da. that's done. Now, so this is the part where they want us to put it in. You can grease it now or you can grease it later and it'll slide right through there if you lift these followers your rocker arms up in the air like so and get it in the front and tap it in it, it's a tight fit in there with that bearing think we're in yes we are because you want to make sure in the back that you have enough room for you to put your clip on after you put your seal in a little grease I already greased the front one uh, put the seal on top put that in like so I 
trying to I try to use my fingers to get these in there a little screwdriver or something so that'll set kind of nice in there now you put your bearing on like so and use your tool again and just do a little tap tap and when you have your um, That didn't look right. Look what just happened. My rocker arm popped right off there. Broke right off. And then it's a belt for this one. <laughs> That's a first. That sucks. Now I gotta call and order one. And we'll put our clip on. Back here. Like so. And our camshaft will be in place. And after that, I'm going to get on the phone, or the computer, and if I can get one of those because that was crazy that was totally random how it broke off like that and I even left these loose so they wouldn't uh, wouldn't be in the way you see that's why I say to tighten everything down first then put your camshaft and put that stuff on but I can tell you right now first fire that would have broke because it's it's broke broke right off and the problem with these is you don't have any extra parts if you look at it look at that thing this Looks like it was fractured already halfway through so that concludes part two and I don't know when I'll get to part three but part three will be your carburetors and uh, you know it's basically your valve cover and your timing and stuff so anywho like share subscribe if you want um, the build on a delay kind of bummed unless I can rob one of these off my SFL 100 for now I'm going to see if they're the same. And if they're the same, the build will continue. Mm -hmm. So, you guys have a good one. Adios.